this video we're going to be discussing electricity and science! Hey guys, today we're going to be discussing what it's like to be a diesel electric power generation mechanic. And before we get into the video, I wanted to say thank you to Steve, Greg, Giancarlo, and Vasily for sending donations at adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal and onto the video. So I have a little riddle for you. What does a mine, a casino, a hospital, a large office building, a ship, a military base... What do they all have in common? Well, they're great places to watch my videos, but the real answer is they all have generators. In fact, generators are everywhere. Um, you may not notice that, but pretty much any building or any offsite thing is going to have some sort of backup power facility. And the reason for this is electricity is obviously essential in today's day and age. And anywhere that needs power at all times is going to have a generator. And someone has to work on these. And any generator basically bigger than your Honda camping generator is usually going to be a diesel generator. Although natural gas is also common. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what it's like to be a diesel electric power generation mechanic. So you might be thinking, hey, you're a truck mechanic, right? You make all these truck videos. Well, that's true. I've been a truck mechanic since 2010. But before that, I was a power generation mechanic for five years. So I actually have knowledge on both sides. And usually, as far as cats go, their departments are kind of broken up individually. And trucks are usually part of something called the power division. And the power division is industrial engines, generators, air compressors, if your dealership deals with those, and trucks. So I didn't really change departments. Um, I'm still in the same division. Um, however, I focus on trucks now. So I want to talk a little bit about that experience. All right, so like I was saying before, if you're working at a cat dealership, it's going to be broken up into departments. You'll have weld shop. Um, you'll have your main shop, which is usually earth moving. You might have something with mining or forestry or shipping. And then you have your power division. So power division, as I said before, is going to be power generation and trucks usually. However, CAT doesn't make truck engines anymore. So if you're thinking of getting into CAT and you don't really want to work on earth moving, electric power generation might be the way to go. The problem is uh, not too many people know about it. Now, I've ever only worked at the one dealership, but I've known several guys that have worked at different dealerships. And usually you kind of have two different guys. You'll have your electrical side guys, which they focus more on the generator in. And I'll show you a picture here, kind of explain what I'm talking about. So any diesel generator is going to have a diesel engine, and that's going to determine the amount of power that can be produced by the generator in. And they'll be matched by the factor. You won't have to worry about, oh, I have this engine, what generator in am I going to put on it? And then you'll usually have your engine guys. So, and then there's some guys that can kind of do both, but usually you have guys that are really good at engines, guys that are really good at electrical, and they don't seem to overlap a ton. Um, unless, you know, they're slow. Anyone can do basic engine work, and anyone can run cable. So, I mostly did the electrical side. I didn't know engines that well until I started in the truck shop. And now I'm probably more of an engine guy if I were to go back into power generation. So, let's talk about what a typical day can be like being a diesel power generation mechanic all right so most diesel power guys are going to be field meaning you'll have a service truck because most of the generators aren't going to get towed to you however sometimes depending on the shop size there might be a few shop guys now this can be a good or a bad thing if you don't like working out in the field it's going to be a hard field for you to work in because a lot of the generators are obviously going to be on customer sites. However, the good thing is usually you'll get higher pay than a shop mechanic. Um, most companies will pay you called a field diff, which means you might get two or three dollars an hour more over your base salary because you're in a field position, meaning you have to go out in the field. Uh, most, you know, like the main shop earth moving side, they're going to have a similar thing. So the guys that are in the shop 
aren't going to get that fuel diff, but if you're in a service truck, you'll probably get that. So it's a little bit of a pay increase. Um, not an insignificant one at that. So you'll usually come in, you'll usually have scheduled work. Um, maybe a customer calls in, let's say it's a hospital, and their generator may have gone down or you need to get work done to it. Um, maybe they're getting a rental unit installed while work's being done because by law, some places have to have a backup generator, obviously like a hospital. So you're gonna end up running a lot of cable usually. Um, this is gonna be a big part of your life as a power generation mechanic is running cable. And I don't mean extension cords. These units are pulling lots of amps usually. If you have a two mega, which is a two megawatt unit, that's gonna be something like a 3516. So you're talking about a, about a 3000 horsepower engine that's capable of most likely one of those could power a small hospital with no problem. And the point of the cable is obviously you have to conduct electricity through items. So most of the time when you're running cable, it's a tedious process, but you're getting paid by the hour. So, and you're gonna run phases. Now, most people in the mechanic field aren't real familiar with AC electrical. So the generator ends are all AC, not DC, which is what you're gonna be familiar with, troubleshooting you know, your basic engines or pretty much all 12 volt. However, you're gonna start running a 24 volt if you're working on these big diesels. And those are all DC, very simple circuits. AC is a lot more complicated, especially the generator ends because most generator ends are three phase. And if you don't know what that means, uh, most of them are 480, 277, three phase. So opposed to having your power and your hot, you'll usually have a ground and a neutral, and then you'll have your three hot phases. And you basically have to do a lot more research to understand the principles, but a generator end produces electricity, alternating current because it's a rotating um, rotor and a stator, so what you're getting is 480 volts if you measure between two of the phases. So there's an A, B, and C phase. And those phases are what powers motors, whatever else. And it can go to a transformer. It can step it down to you know your normal house voltage if it wants to. Um, that's really all the electrical side. And that, that's going to seem overwhelming at first if you're only used to working on engines or maybe equipment is all this electrical stuff. But you shouldn't fear too much. They're not going to throw you in there and you're not going to be troubleshooting, you know, real high voltage, you know, 4160 or anything. You're not going to be worrying about switch gear and stuff until you've progressed in your career more as far as troubleshooting those systems. Okay, so talking a little bit more about the electrical side, you have your three phases. There's also different voltage ranges you might have to deal with. Um, some places are on... They call it single phase, but it's not actually correct. That would be like 240, 120. That'd kind of be your house circuitry. That's usually smaller units. Most of the bigger ones are going to be 480. Uh, there's also, you have your 240, 139, which is a three phase 240. There's also 208, 120, which is three phase two. And all these terms might not make sense to you now, but you'll pick it up as you get along. Basically, that's the voltage output of the generator end. And, you know, things that are going to be new to you, um, circuit breakers. And I don't mean, you know, the little ones you have at your house. These are humongous, you know, maybe 2,000 2, amp circuit breakers, um, large pulls. Some of them don't even have a handle. Some of them are strictly electronic. They're very expensive, very heavy. You're going to have to worry about voltage regulators. Um, these are control the voltage to the generator in and the excitation circuit. Uh, there's diode packs. Um, you're going to be doing a lot more electrical troubleshooting as far as the insulation goes. Um, there's something called a megometer, which is basically a super duper voltage meter or ohm meter. It's going to measure the insulation values of each phase to make sure you're not getting any sort of crossover between the phases. Um, and then there's the engine side too. Maybe you don't care about the electrical side. Maybe you just want to work on the engines and you can do that too. There's a couple guys. Um, that's pretty much all they focus on. And 
you know, a lot of these engines are bigger, but some are the same as the truck engines. Some are very small. There's even gas engines that are involved. Um, you know, maybe you have a bank or something that's small. It just needs a small backup generator. Might be natural gas. Um, it's not even gonna run on diesel. So you get a wide variety of work. And if you really like the electrical, you can go crazy into that. You can even get into the uh, UPSs, which are uninterruptible power supplies. Uh, these, they're very expensive. Most of them are battery banks. Uh, Cat makes one that's actually a like a 600 pound flywheel that spins and creates electricity. And there's automatic transfer switches. There's a lot involved in this field that you may have never heard of before. And the reason I'm talking about this in this video is a lot of guys think diesel and they think trucks or they think earth moving or mining, but they never really think of the generator side. You know, every city in the world is going to have generators in it. You know, maybe not every city is going to have mining or forestry or shipping. You know, it's it varies from place to place, but every place is going to have a generator guy, um, you know, from Antarctica to some mine in the equator. You know, they're all going to have generators. And if you're a good generator guy, you can work anywhere in the world. Um, you know, that's a real advantage of this. If if you're looking at, you know, getting out there and, you know, maybe you don't want to stay in one place, you know, if you're in, you know, whatever, Kansas and you, you've always worked in a truck shop and, you know, you really want to expand your horizons, the generator field might be kind of an interesting gig to get into. Um, and they make pretty good money, you know, um, comparable to any truck shop position. But like I said, most of them are going to be field, so they're going to get paid a little more. Okay, so as a mechanic, what kind of tooling are you gonna need? So getting back to that, you know, the generator gets there at the hospital for the backup unit, you know, you're running cable. Um, a lot of it's basic hand tooling. Um, you're gonna be hooking up lugs, so you'll need some like maybe T-handled um, Allen wrench style wrenches. You're gonna need all the standard wrenches, sockets, torque wrenches, things like that. Um, the thing you're going to need more, though, of is electrical troubleshooting. So you want to get a good meter. Um, pretty much everyone uses the fluke meters. Um, if you're doing UPSs or any of these sensitive electronics, you're probably going to want to get some insulated tooling. Um, if you're going to be doing most of the heavier engine duty side stuff, well, that'll depend on what you're working on as to what you're going to get. But some of the stuff carries over, like the head bolt socket for the C-15s, it's the same for the 3516s, and they were developed around the same time. Um, and it uses CIS. If you're used to CIS, if you're used to um, ET, you're going to be using these as well on the generator end, as well as, you know, if you were used to earth moving or trucks. So that's good to know. Um, you're going to do also a big part of it. You may have heard this term load bank. I've done a lot of load banks. And what is a load bank? Well, let's talk about what a load bank is. So a load bank is a testing tool, but it's also a test. So if you're doing a load bank, what that means is you are going to simulate a heavy load on a generator in. And a physical load bank is most, most of them are a heater. It's a big electric heater. And we know, you know, if you ever plug in a heater to your outlet, it can draw a lot of current. Um, and a load bank is a humongous heater. You know, think of something you have to tow on a trailer behind a truck. And what it is, is you'll hook up all your phases. So Standard generator is 480. You hook up grounds, and you'll have your, you know, your A, B, and C phase hooked up, and you'll do your calculation. Okay, I need six legs per phase, and blah blah blah. You'll hook it up, and usually a load bank's like two to four hours. So you'll run this generator, and what you'll do is you can determine the amount of load put on that generator, and it's kind of like a dyno for a generator. And what you're doing is you're turning on heater circuits. So if it's the middle of summer and you're in Phoenix doing a load bank, you're going to hate yourself because you're running this, you know, 2000 kilowatt heater outside next to the insanely large generator and, and engine that's also producing a lot of heat and it might be 115 out and you're turning on a heater. And what it's doing is it's loading that generator up because a lot of these generators are standby. They'll 
They wait for a load to get applied, but if you have a good power grid, they may, they may never run off the generator. They might cycle every once a week for 15, 30 minutes, but they're just I, not idling. They're running at 1800 RPM, but they're running unloaded. So people will get load bags done to determine if the generator, the engine, the cooling system, fuel system, everything can handle being under a load. And they're somewhat tedious. You know, you're hooking all the wiring up. You're running the test for two to four hours. You're monitoring. You're writing down amps and voltages and, you know, your turbo temperature and the oil pressure and stuff. And then you got to take everything apart. You know, a lot of this stuff's going to be repetitive. But, it, you know, you're paid by the hour. So you're still getting paid a good amount to do this work. So that's what a load bank is. I'll sort of show you a picture of what the internals will look like. Now let's talk about the dangers of electricity. Um, obviously, the electric chair, uh, people can get electrocuted. Um, there is a lot of danger associated with electricity that's out there. But that doesn't mean being a power generation mechanic is inherently dangerous. Um, you know, the equipment you're working on, you're not really jacking things up, so you're not getting under trucks or heavy pieces of equipment usually. So it's safer in that regard for the most part. But electricity can be dangerous. Um, the five years I worked there, though, I don't know one guy that got electrocuted at all. I, you know, I mean just zapped. I don't mean like full on, you know, shaking and, you know, your eyes blowing out of your head. I mean, um, if you're careful, you're never going to be touching anything hot. Um, you'll learn what that means. You'll know, you know, okay, the circuit breaker's open. Um, you'll test everything before you touch anything. Um, a lot of things can be isolated um, mechanically um, from conducting electricity. You very rarely are going to be working on live circuits. Um, mostly you'll just be testing them, so you just have to be careful. Um, things like electrical, um, you know, insulating gloves, things like this can keep you very safe. I, I never got zapped at all, not even a little bit. Um, you know, I've been hit by a spark plug, even working on trucks on the regen systems, I've been hit with some high voltage there, but it's very low current. Um, but as long as you're safe, you shouldn't really have to, uh, you shouldn't have a fear of being, you know, hurt very badly by electricity. And you'll be an expert in electricity by working on these over, you know, a few months or years. And uh, that's not really a fear. It's more scary standing next to a running engine that's under a load bank than the generator end. Um, you know, I've seen a lot more engines come apart than generator ends. Because generator ends really only has one moving part in it, the rotor. Um, and if something starts going off, you can hit that emergency stop or open that circuit breaker very quickly. Um, so don't don't be terrified of working on electricity if you're unfamiliar with it. As you work in the field, you will learn to respect it and learn that it's it's not an incredibly dangerous job to have, okay? So is there a good future in being an electric power generation mechanic? Yes, there is. Um, unlike the cat truck side, cat still makes tons of generators. They're one of the leading brands that makes generators. Um, there's also, you know, Cummins makes them, Kohler makes them. There's, there's actually several companies that make aftermarket uh, generators. You'll, you'll even run into really old ones, Waukesha's and things like that, because some of these buildings that have been around a while, they'll still have their old generators that have been there 30, 40, 50 years sometimes. Um, so even if you work at a cat dealership or Cummins, you'll probably end up working at different sites with different engines. You know, there's Gentech too. There's, there's a lot of different um, companies out there that work on most of the brands. However, if you're working at, say, a cat or a Cummins, you'll probably focus more, obviously, on those. Okay, so we've talked about the generator end a little bit, um, some of the engines it can have, the type of work you'll be doing, what a load bank is. Uh, these these are a lot of the principles you're going to want to know if, if you're thinking about it. Um, you know, I, I'd say go into it if you're if you've been thinking about it or you don't like the field you're in now. It can be very um, interesting. If you're looking for training on the generator side, there's not a lot of places that offer generator training. There's a lot of diesel classes, but a lot of places won't have strictly generator training. Um, a lot of the guys you're going to run into in this field are probably ex-Air Force, because the Air Force 
has a lot of guys that get training with barriers and generators. And barriers have something to do with airplanes slowing down, not really the generator side. But the Air Force does a lot of generator work. And most of the guys you'll probably run into are going to be ex-Air Force. You might run into some other military guys, but most of them aren't going to be, they aren't going to have generator experience like the Air Force guys are. Um, you know, maybe you were in the Air Force and you had this experience and you're wondering what the private sector is like. So that's my video on being an electrical power generation mechanic. I hope the video informed you and let you learn a little bit more about the field. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.